Ah, yeah, John Fogarty, leader of CCR, one of the great all-time bands. I've learned more from him than just about anybody on the guitar. Even some things that people thought I learned from Jimi Hendrix. Check it out. I recently saw a documentary on Netflix, Creedence Clearwater Revival at the Royal Albert Hall. Of course, John Fogarty is a great singer, but I was reminded about what a great guitar player he is as well. Song after song, he just killed it. Now, you'll never see him on any top 10 guitarist list, but he had a great style. Very simple, yet compelling. On lead, he was the king of the chord tones, but his rhythm style was really cool too. In fact, it's how I learned the Jimi Hendrix chord technique. It was through a Fogarty song. But how? Wasn't he just a strummer? Ugh, I hate that phrase. No, actually he wasn't. And the way that he plays his chord technique is like Hendrix, only it's clearer and it's much simpler, so it's much more accessible to learn. Down on the Corner is great fun to play, but it's not quite enough to get the gist of what I'm really talking about. Instead, Lodi is the perfect vehicle to learn a chordal style of play because it uses it in a broad yet clear and transferable way. First, let's have a listen, then I'll break it down and I'll show you how you can use it in other songs as well. Now, Fogarty may have played that with a capo, but actually I think it's much more instructive without a capo because that way you can see very clearly that it works for any chord of that shape. Now let's take a look at it in slow motion and then break it down completely so we understand why it works and you can use it in different musical contexts. that's just the lick. There's more. Now one of the major things I took away was I didn't have to play the whole chord. I could just play pieces of it and it would sound kind of cool. For example, in going from the one to the two to the three chord and then back down, I don't have to play the whole chord, which would sound clunky. <laughs> I could just play a little piece of it. or and both of those sound better especially if somebody else is strumming along it sounds better to put that little fill in another thing i learned was if you played hammer-ons and pull-offs on those two note chords it sounded really cool so here's a b flat triad the one chord and here's a c minor triad the two chord and I can hammer on and pull off between them. But if I play two note chords, it makes it even better. Or. So you can already tell it's starting to sound kind of Hendrixy, and you can take it into any key you want, like this Beatle-ish example in the key of E.
There aren't too many guitars who really get me going like Billy Gibbons does. Somehow, even in simple blues rock, he injects his own unique flavor. Jesus Just Left Chicago is one of those great examples. I'm going to show you a little wrinkle that he adds into that song that you can put into your own bag of tricks. As I mentioned earlier, Jesus Just Left Chicago, one of my all-time favorite ZZ Top songs, and that says a lot. I always thought it was really simple, and it is, but not in a totally conventional way. Here's what I mean. I rarely played in bands that had two guitar players, so I always had both rhythm and lead duties. But playing this song, well, it all makes sense, right? Because ZZ Top just has one guitar player, so this should be perfect. But things weren't perfect. I mean, the chord sequence is easy enough. <laughs> There was also this bent note that was on the album, and it was an overdub in the album, but I really wanted it in there, so I'd play kind of like this. So not perfect, but not bad. And then when it came to the four chord, the C, I would just play the inner three strings, the D, the G, and the B strings, like this. And that always sounded a little bit thin to me, but okay, I had a basis, so it worked out okay. Incidentally, you can also add that bass note, but you've got to dampen out the fifth string, and it's not that easy to do. Then we get to the solo, and it's a cool one, and it's got a bunch of standard blues licks, but it's also got those nagging sustained B flat to G sounds, these I'm talking about. Like, for example, in the ending turnaround lick that he does. It goes a little bit like this. Now again, I think that sounds pretty close, but did you notice how I was arching my fingers a ton to get that sustain out of that G note? And that wasn't totally easy. And when it came to the solo, there were other things that I would try and get, like that screaming note, like this. Again, that B-flat to G, followed by this. And so if you have to do it fast, it's... I can do it, but it is tough, and I muff it up quite a bit. So how do you get it to work? How do you get the right sound? The first thing that comes to mind for me is to use open G tuning then the chords work out just fine. But that's kind of a pain to do live, you gotta retune your guitar, and plus, when you get to the solo, the standard blues licks aren't gonna work, so it's gonna make the solo kinda of tough. Well, the answer is so simple, it's embarrassing. Just tune the A string down to a G. Just one string and everything fits into place, check it out. Just tune the A string down by matching the G string. <laughs> Now here's the G to C. And you see you get that in. Now here's the C to F. Nice and rich sounding. And how about that turnaround lick? It's easier because you've got that open note on the fifth string, which is a G, and that can sustain. And by the way, that also makes that lead line so much easier to play. And that's because that open note gives you time to get up the neck. Fake open G, a great little trick. Let's be honest, most of us went through a period where we really wanted to play fast. And for those of us of a certain age, that meant Jimmy Page on Heartbreaker or Eric Clapton on Crossroads. Well, today I'm going to show you a simple trick that both Clapton and Page and Alvin Lee used to make themselves sound really fast, and it's not that tough. Right after I learned the minor pentatonic scale box position, you know the one. 
I found that I could actually play some things that sort of sounded like Led Zeppelin. It was pretty amazing. And Don and Dennis and Roger and I sat in that basement for hours upon end playing chorus after chorus of I Can't Quit You Baby or You Shook Me or some other Led Zeppelin based blues song. It was so much fun and when you're that young you just kind of cut loose and play whatever you can and just don't worry about a thing. Must have been one of those first Saturdays we were all taking a break and Dennis went and got an album for us to all listen to while we were taking a break. It was Cream's Wheels of Fire. Roger and I were just listening to it intently, listening to Clapton's super thick sound and just having a wail on Crossroads. Neither of us had really heard Eric Clapton before. Not Cream, not John Mayle and the Blues Breakers. Anyway, we tried learning in signature lick or two. You know, something like this. Now we struggled with it, of course, but eventually we found two little ideas that he used that we were able to incorporate into our own play. The first was to use the major third over the one chord in the blues here in A, like this. This note right here. That's not really the point of this video. The second was what we called a stutter step, and that really was exciting to us because it allowed us to play faster. Sort of like this. We'll get to the mechanics and show you how to apply it in just a little bit, but it was one of those eye-opening moments that's kind of like when you buy a dog and you think it's unique, and then the first time you take it out for a walk, you realize how many other dogs there are in the neighborhood. So it was with this. All of a sudden, we heard it all over Clapton's play and all over Page's play, too, in songs like Heartbreaker and Dazed and Confused. It was really amazing and exciting to us. So let's have a look at the mechanics and show you how to use it. Let's learn the technique on the first string of the blues box position, but it'll work in any string and it'll work in any pentatonic position. So we're going to start with the note that's toward the nut, this note right here. We'll pick it and then pick the note that's toward the bridge on the same string. Then we'll start from, again, that first note, and we'll hammer on and pull off. And then we'll play the note toward the bridge on the string below it. So the whole thing put together is really simple. Now it's simple, but it's not easy, so take your time playing it slowly. And build up speed over time. You also need to build up stamina in your left hand. This is almost entirely left hand speed. Now I want to show you how to extend that speed even more. The simple idea is to use multiple strings in the same position. So for example, pentatonic position and it works in every pentatonic position too for example here it is in fourth pentatonic position now the last trick to all of this is once you've got the mechanics down slowly and you can really execute it decently is to let yourself go and do it at the edge and there's nobody better than Jimmy Page at doing that. Now, a lot of people call it sloppy. I just call it good, clean, fun, and rock and roll. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. you got to be able to slow down and play it on the beat when you need to. You know what I'm talking about. All right, here's an example of using that technique over a 12-bar blues. Now, I am going to overuse it. Normally, I wouldn't use the technique this often in a 12-bar blues, but it's just for demonstration purposes.
Now, if you want to learn the big daddy of all the classic rock speed licks, click on this video because in it, I show you how to play it really easily, smoothly, and in a way that you'll never forget. So click here and I'll see you in the next video. We'll see you on down the road.